hello and welcome everyone. I'm Ari Lax, and this week I found a nice one. Uh, it actually caught my eye for an interesting reason. The uh, player playing this deck, uh, their username on Magic Island is Funk, spelled with four U's. Uh, but they are the first person I've ever seen to get two, uh, you know, it's random selection which lists are published to the 5 League list. But they got two 5 League lists in the same day. Um, they were slightly different, but it was kind of cool, and um, I opted for this specific list of their deck, which is kind of one that we haven't seen for a little bit. I know people were pretty hyped about this idea when, uh, you know, one of the cards was first unbanned, but the deck is a Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek Gifts on Given combo deck. And by combo, it's kind of like a combo control deck. Um, this deck and this style of deck is something that had been seen back in Extended, when these cards were legal, um, prior to the point where everyone just kind of put them all together with Dark Depths and everything kind of fell apart. But it, you know, was banned in Modern for so many years with uh, the Sword of the Meek ban, and when it was finally unbanned, it never really saw a resurgence. Just a couple of metagame factors here and there kind of held it down at the time. Uh, and this deck 5 0 twice in the same day is pretty uh, interesting. So, go through. We got some traditional blue-white spot answers. Bunch of path, best removal spell. A couple spell snares. You'll note there's no other counter magic. Um, you are trying to tap out a fair amount. So, you only really want like the super efficient counter magic. Uh, you've got an Oblivion Ring and Attention Sphere as generic interaction. Supreme Verdict, just the biggest sweeper you can. Uh, engineered Explosives, you are an Academy Runes deck, so you want some recursive sweeper. Um, and then a Timely Reinforcements, I'm not entirely sure why this is in the main deck, but it is there. We've got our Win Conditions, uh, we're only killing in one of two ways. We've got Thopter Sword, so, you know, you set up the combo and you sacrifice an artifact to make a 1-1. One -one. When that artifact is Sword of the Meek, it comes back, and you just get to pay one mana to make a 1-1 one -one and gain a life. Or you have Elish Norn Gifts... Uh, unburial rights, so you can gifts ungiven. Because you are searching for a specific type of card, which is cards with different names, you can choose to fail to find any number of them. And if you select only two, uh, your opponent has to choose two of those cards, which is the two that you selected, and put them into your graveyard. So if you put unburial rights and a creature into the grave, or unburial rights and a creature are your only two selections, they both go to the graveyard, and then you immediately flash back unburial rights and go off. And, uh, this deck opts for Elish Norn as its main deck uh, thing, which makes sense because when you are specifically... So the history of Gifts Rights is that it used to see a lot of play early in the modern format, uh, but it kind of fell out of favor as people started pushing towards the more fair side of things. But it was always a really good tool against the unfair decks because you could just tap your four mana for Gifts, on tap, go off, and then that was just the game. And... You, I mean, back then you, you had two cards that you were going for because your goal is to, you know, you don't want to get something like Inkwell Leviathan or something. You don't really care about fighting the fair decks in that axis because it's just too hard for you to, like, gifts through, like, scavenging ooze or gifts through a remand or whatever. Um, so you want to take the card that hammers it home the most against the unfair decks. The two cards that were used back then, I don't think anything's been printed that obsoletes them. As you can see, they're still in the deck list, are Elish Norn and Iona. And if you look at the unfair decks people are playing now, um, there's not as much combo and there's more creature combo. So you want Elish Norn to just lock out those decks. Um, it doesn't 100% KO Dredge, but it makes them have to play a really, really slow game uh, with Golgari Grave Trolls. And it KO is, in fact, like just done. Um, no one plays Affinity that much anymore, but this card just game overs Affinity. Um, doesn't do the best against Death Shadow, but the Kiln Fiend decks that people are playing, it does work against. Uh, and then, you know, you can sideboard into Iona when you're playing against a combo deck. You want to shut them off of casting a specific color, but that's not going to work against, uh, you know, your opponent can just play... It's actually pretty good against it, in fact, but... Uh, actually think about this more. Maybe Iona is... Close to equivalently good. It's an interesting thought for later. But anyways, uh, you have, you know, these are your two win conditions. Combo A, combo B. And then you've just got a bunch of card selection. 
Uh, Thirst for Knowledge, pretty sweet card. Uh, one thing to note is that if you look at like old school iterations of this deck, the artifact lands, so like Seed of the Synod and uh, Ancient Den were legal. So you actually had a significantly higher... Oh, and Chrome Mox. Yeah, a bunch of great artifacts that were just free rolls were legal. So Thirst for Knowledge is basically three mana, draw three, discard an extra land. Uh, in this iteration, you have a decent number of artifacts. But at the same time, uh, you do need you don't have as many incidental artifacts. So when you play Thopter Foundry, you specifically need to have another artifact to start the chain going. Um, so Thirst is kind of competing for a resource that you'll have to rebuild later. Um, the drawing extra cards does help with that. You got Serum Visions because you basically can't play Serum Visions if you're playing a blue deck, or can't not play Serum Visions if you're playing a blue deck that isn't uh, just killing your opponent by turn three, like in fact. And even then, most of those decks still have it. It's just, cantrips are great, and the fact that this card sees so much play should be a huge indicator to anyone who wants to unban preordain that some nonsense is going to happen if you do that. Uh, you've got Gifts. I think... I don't necessarily think this iteration of the deck is built to maximize Gifts in the ways that it could be, um, but it, you can get a uh, gift stack that goes for the Thopter combo at the least, but I think you might be able to make some mild changes that upgrade your uh, gift stacks that are not Thopter based. For example, uh, if you need to gifts for a sweeper right now, you can't do that. Whereas if you had like Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, and Snapcaster Mage, you could guarantee finding some way to sweep the board. Um, another thing that this deck can do with gifts uh, just based on its split of card draw, is you can gifts just against the fair decks. You can bury them in card advantage. You can find, you know, second gifts, thirst for knowledge, uh, serum visions, and then some other piece of whatever you want to find and force them into a spot where your gifts on given puts you up a card and then finds you more stuff that puts you up more cards and just bury your opponent. Then you have kind of the traditional Thopter combo enabler, which is muddle the mixture. It's just a three mana tutor for your swords and your Thopters that also counter stuff. Um, one thing I'd like to note is that there's no two mana interaction to find with Muddle, just combo pieces. Um, that might be a change that can look at. Onto the mana, you have one Black Source, which is useful for hard casting and burial rights if you draw it, um, but also for casting explosives for three. Uh, you know, sometimes useful. Bunch of Flooded Strands, a uh, bunch of blue-white duels, blue and white basics and a bunch of other blue-white lands because you're trying to take kind of minimal damage or less damage than you should be. Mystic Gate, I'm not huge on in this deck. You don't have a lot of like white-white, blue-blue uh, cost restrictions. So I'm not huge on it in terms of what it's doing. I like it better if I'm playing like Wrath of God and Cryptic Command. Um, sea Chrome Coast versus more Glacial Fortress is interesting to discuss as well. You got some Talisman of Progress. Not only does this enable turn three gifts, turn four uh, Umburial Elish Norm, um, but it helps you increase your artifact concentration for going off with Thopter Foundry. A couple Ghost Quarters to uh, hit creature lands because you are kind of a control deck and also interact with opposing uh, land combo -y decks. And then Academy Runes, which is kind of the core of the deck. It's your inevitability that. Even if they interact with your Thopter Foundry with Abrupt Decay, you can bring it back and eventually we'll kill them with it. Um, you also have a Talaria West, which helps set up a lot of your gift stacks. So uh, the Thopter Foundry gift stack that I discussed was two, three, four. So if you get the combo Academy Runes Talaria West, um, no matter what they do, because you have a second Academy Runes to find, uh, if they give you the combo, you have the combo. Easy. If they give you a combo piece in either land, you'll be able to Academy Runes back the other combo piece um, by Talaria Westing for the other Academy Runes. So eventually you will go off. Also, you can uh, Talaria West for Engineered Explosives, which is a nice upgrade uh, that model and make sure, you know, I was talking about being unable to find interaction. Well, Talaria West does that. Um, the sideboard's kind of interesting. You know, I moved it between like sweeping effects and spot answers. Usually with blue decks, you expect to see a lot more spot answers like this because of how Snapcaster Mage works. And this deck still has a ton, but it's not... 
they're not as effective as they would be if you had access to Snapcaster Mage, which I don't think this deck wants access to a ton of Snapcasters. Maybe you want one so you can uh, set up a gifts pile with it, but it's the, the power level of these cards is going to be somewhat muted. So you've got Disenchant. Um, this is a case where it's the best possible thing because you can't play Stony Silence because you're trying to go off with Optic Foundry. Um, you've got a Celestial Purge just as a way to interact with random stuff like Liliana, Blood Moon. Uh, a Blessed Alliance, it takes care of random things like uh, Slippery Bogles or whatever people want to play with. Um, also, at the same time, Blessed Alliance, Gaining Life matters against Burn. Um, there's a few other cases where the Sacrifice matters a lot. Uh, just in general, I've been pretty impressed with this card. Oh, uh, against, like, Infect with Vines of Vastwood, you know, they sacrifice nothing they can do. Um, generally pretty strong, you know, Apostles Blessing, Death Shadow. It's just, Bless Alliance is one of those cyborg cards that should be seeing a little more play in Modern than it is, and I'm glad to see it here. Uh, it's just, like, multifunction and situationally powerful against certain linear decks. We've got some Counter Magic uh, for Control Mirrors. You'll notice that uh, we are very, very heavy on... Or leaning towards the cheaper counter spells because uh, a lot of the times we're you know against combo we have other plans we want some amount of interaction but really what our counter spells are trying to do is protect our gifts on givens our thirst for knowledge our expensive spells from other control decks interaction so that's why we're leaning on dispel uh, we got some more timely reinforcements for aggressive decks uh, a wrath of god for just additional sweepers Elspeth Sun's Champion as our big threat when our two main deck lines of attack are shut off. Um, just like post board against the green black decks, that can be an issue. And they just can't really beat an Elspeth. This card's great. Uh, some relics to handle opposing graveyard decks, which is interesting to me because it exiles and exiles our graveyard. I kind of wonder if Nihil Spellbomb would have been better in this slot because you can also recur it with Academy Runes. Um, but this card has its own advantages of continuously exiling. And then you have an Iona to swap in for Elishorn when you need to shut off a combo deck. So, all in all, um, this deck's doing some things that I think are powerful and not necessarily being attacked. Like I said in my Enduring Ideal article, I think that the number of ways to incidentally interact with non-creature card types has dropped significantly. Um, with the push towards Death Shadow Aggro and the push towards... Um, Dredge taking up a lot of interactive and cyborg space. I think that decks like this are well positioned to exploit that. So we'll see how this does and uh, definitely excited to get to cast some old school favorites.